Okay, it's uh, 10 o'clock. We'll call our board trustees meeting together to, to order. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, we'll start with a roll call. Uh, District 1, Ken, who won't be here uh, today, is uh, doing his night shift and actually woke him up a little while ago calling. So. But it's, uh, uh, so he won't be here. Uh, District 2, uh, Wendy. Here. District 3, Aaron. I'm present. District 4, Bob, I'm here. District 5, me. Here. Okay. We have a quorum. Uh, we will now open it up to for public comments for anyone that wants to uh, speak to the board uh, with a three minute time limit. I'll be glad to. Pardon? I'll be glad to. Okay, go ahead. And you guys will start working towards those four books that are down in the kids section. Okay. Um, you know, no one's burning books. There's been a lot of lies passed around the internet. Nobody's burning books. You know, no one's calling, threatening. Nobody's bringing guns to the library. It's always peaceful like this. And it's nice to see new faces that have not really been here to be able to experience it. So, thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? Okay. Wait, can I say something? You certainly do. I'm Allison Hensley. You don't know me. Um, I just want to say congratulations to Aaron and Lee for not only running for the seat, but willing to take on the responsibility, continuing responsibility after the past couple of years and everything the board has worked for and through. And I just want you to know that you have a large amount of support from the community. I'm very proud of you. I'm very happy to be sitting here today to say that to your faces. Thanks. Thank you. And I, I just want to throw out, yes, congratulations to Aaron and Lee. And is and I think you can tell that the folks out here have been to many meetings and we're just so thrilled what you all are doing and appreciate our new director mm -hmm. and keep up the good work. Our community supports you. Laura Anderson. Cleaning out corners, which is a nice 
basically a skeleton staff for the first few months. And, uh, Good looking skeleton. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
All of those items are still on our account, so you can see at a glance why they're tagged. Um, at that point, if they bring the items back in, yay, you brought them back. Thank you so much. There's, again, no fine, no punishment. If you come in finally at that point and say, yeah, I lost all those books, then, then it's up to you to replace those books. You can either replace them or you can pay us the value of what we pay for them. Okay, so that's the first tag. If you bring that stuff in after the first tag, basically we say, thank you. You're good to go. We take that tag off. You can check out items just like anybody else can. Okay. If you have a second tag, the whole process is exactly the same for the next time we take out books and we can't get a hold of them and we don't bring them back. But the second tag, according to the policy, if, even if you bring those books back, again, bear in mind this is after the two and a half months we've put into trying to get them back, and it's the second time we've done this to the library and the community, and those books are not available to anyone while you have them sitting at home for whatever reason. Um, because because the second time pretty much represents a pattern, at that point, even if you bring the books back, the policy is you need to go before the board and explain why this is a pattern for you or circumstances were such in each case that yada, yada, yada. And then it's up to you guys to decide how you want to move forward with that page. So from, from our point of view, we try really hard and give people a lot of opportunity to make good on bringing those back, so. And, and I think the reason why it got brought up to our attention, right, is the second tag, the fact that people have to come before the board yeah. and face that sort of, yeah. Yeah. One of the public uh, shame yeah, side of it. Actually, one of the staff had raised a concern that it would be intimidating for the yeah. patron to come from the front of the board, and as a result, their kids aren't going right. at library. You know, so you'd like to see uh, those kids still be able to access the library. Right. So, you know, there was a little bit of discussion whether or not we wanted to continue with that, or if we wanted to uh, do some alternate. Uh, so, so when people appear before the board on their second tag, uh, what what kind of reasons do they give? I mean, once uh, so, so basically they checked it out for a month, and in, in, in the list it's a it's an eight week procedure before they get tagged. So so they've had it three months, and I would assume some people have come in and said, you know, appeared before the board at their second tag, and said, I mean, what what kind of reasoning did did they use? We've done one. Right? Yeah. Since I've been on board. And she called him. I mean, she didn't have to like actually appear before. Maybe we did too. Maybe we did the same thing. Well, I think there was one that we had scheduled that she had to get. Yeah. Call. She never did come in. But, but the one had, <clears throat> it was a totally accidental situation where she destroyed the book and then had not been able to pay to replace it or something like that right. for a while. And so she came and spoke to us. And but essentially apologized and we reinstated her. You know, was, and I think it was no big deal, but it was still, you know, that hum of trying to right. schedule that, you know, schedule it for a board meeting, and then you gotta explain yourself to these people, right? And I think she did have this with a that presents with a letter or something. Yeah, maybe. Would you be willing to, to take on this as the director? Yeah. That, you know, instead of, I mean, just switch out, basically must speak to the director instead of the board of trustees, you know? Do you, do you, or would you rather have that? To me, I think, I think part of the purpose of it is because you guys are responsible for the financial aspect of it. You know, you represent the people whose money goes into the pot that we all share, right? right? So I think that... Yeah, you can. There's no public input. Okay, so You've you told me many times. Okay. As, um, as a former director. It doesn't matter here. We've got an expert. Can we, can we invite our expert to speak? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Actually, in my personal opinion, this is, this is a little bit more complicated than let's just 
decide, or let's just rewrite it, because of the layers of who has the responsibility. The director in the library, if, if a patron comes to me and says blah, 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 then I'll work with that person. Right. At any point during that three month period where you haven't brought whatever item back, right. the tag, part of the implication of the tag is that we have tried repeatedly to get a hold of you and there has been no feedback whatsoever. So, so we don't know. You know, and it happens that sometimes people have left town and they've taken their books with them. Or they've moved and they, they left their books at their landlord at the rental place and they don't care. You know, so I, I think from the staff perspective, we've done our level best to make good on that for everybody concerned. I think the reason that it has to go in front of the board is because at that point it's about this will trust really, you know, can we trust you? And there have I've never sat in on one of those personally, but there have been times where somebody's come to talk to the board literally years later and explained where they were and what was happening, and the board has said, okay, we'll give you another chance. And there's also the opportunity to say, okay, we'll give you another chance, but you can't have 45 books, we're going to limit you to five books. So at that point, what's involved with structuring that is. But I think that should really, really be up to you guys and not, not up to. You know what I'm saying? Because you're dealing with the whole reason this is in place is because you're dealing with the financial responsibility of those materials. Basically, I'm I'm willing to talk about past experiences and what that's like and what we've into you, but I really don't think that should be my responsibility. Okay. So, uh, what what do other libraries do? I mean, what's what's the answer for other? Do we know? Off the top of my head, I don't know, but I will say also that part of that is other libraries have a much bigger budget. Right. So, so that's, again, that's part of why that whole thing is in place because, you know, it's the same thing as like when you come and get a new card and say, okay, once you take out one item and bring it back, you can have your allotted whatever. The reason for that is in the past, we've had people who get a new card, check out six, hundred dollars worth of material and never come back and that material is just gone and that's that's our responsibility to make sure as much as we can and still be fair to everybody that that doesn't happen so it's sort of the same kind of idea like we, we don't have a big enough budget to be blase about it I guess sometimes. are you satisfied with the process as it is um Again, I've never sat in on one of those meetings, so I don't really know what they're like, but the feedback I've gotten is that they are brutal. They're hard. And, and that people, a lot of times, that is the stopping point. They won't come and fix their account because they don't want to deal with that kind of, what they feel like is going to be a little bit of humiliation yeah. and whatever. So I, I think that it would behoove us to, to look at it, to maybe restructure that part of it a little bit and be more specific about what's involved with that part of it. And maybe that would be reassuring the people who are willing to come in and talk. Maybe we could have them meet with just their trustee, and just our trustee first, first. Yeah. so they don't have to sit for the entire and board and just have a lot of Yeah, and that's what I mean by, I think it's definitely worth sitting and talking about in terms of how else can we do this to make it more comfortable. So if we were gonna raise the $3 fee that Charge right now that we add to the book. I mean, how much would we have to raise it? To the the three dollar fee is specifically based on the cost of the materials for us to recatalog, recover, rebarcode all of the steps we go through from a brand new book to a boundary county library book that sits on the shelf. That's all that three dollars is intended for. It it doesn't cover the cost of the overdue stuff at all. Or the staff time, because it should, right? It shouldn't. We're not money making it. Right, right, right. The work they do is to, is to process all this. Right. But, you know, if our budget is out, a, a fee for materials, then that is Yeah, so and, and also just, I mean, mainly to, to make it, 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 it's sad, but there is absolutely no uh, consequence for actions. There's no reason not to do the action, right? And I think that's part of it too. If if you're if you can just bring stuff back or pay a fee and be right back where you were at before, that's great. If there's another level of 
I have to explain myself and, and be responsible for what for the actions I've taken in front of this group of people who represent the whole community on behalf of the library. A lot of people I think are like, yeah, I'm not gonna bother. What we're really talking about are the people that are like, yeah, I really want to use the library, but I don't want to have to go through that. Right. And maybe part of that is because I don't really know what that's going to involve and it sounds scary. You know? And I would like to I would like to say too that even folks who have a tag like that are still welcome to come and borrow our paperbacks. So nobody is ever in a position where they can't come and get reading material from the library, especially for their children. We have a lot of books paid back for their children. And we never look at their account and go, well, you're tagged, you can't have any facts. We never do that. Wendy, <clears throat> you wanna, do you have anything to add in the discussion? Um, does this happen very often? that somebody does not return the book, that you have to go through all the steps. The second tag. I mean, I the second tag, you know, not nearly as often as the first tag does happen. You know, I, it, the, the percentage of people that have a second tag goes a lot further down, yeah. So no. And, and generally speaking, what happens 99% of the time is they get that second tag and we just never see them again. Even if they come in and say, yeah, I want to borrow books, and we look at their account and go, I'm really sorry, you have a second tag. By policy, that means you have to do it before the board and talk about why that happened. A lot of times they'll go, oh, okay, and leave the building and we never see them again. So I think there's a certain amount of, they don't really care or they don't care enough to go through that final step. If, if, we, if there was a way we could make that final step, you know, well, I mean, right? When you said- A little less scary. Right, I mean, okay, you got a second tag, can we set up an appointment with one of our board members who can talk about it? And, I think and a one-on-one -on -one is a good idea. I think that might be a lot less I mean, intimidating, yeah. I was thinking of there, the district board member that they're in, and they can't explain the situation then they've got a meeting, right? Then they've got a body at the meeting, right? Well, it would be at the meeting if the board that's true. could present it to the rest of the board, we could uh, yeah, that's true. decide whether that we're going to see it or not. I don't know. I, to me, it goes back to speeding tickets, which I've got more than one. <coughs> Usually, when I pay my ticket, I'm done. So that's kind of where, but I, I understand what you're talking about. So I'm not. We get three of them for your license. They do. <laughs> they do. Which is also kind of the same thing. But but thankfully they don't they don't because if you get you know three in a certain time frame they have to pull your yeah, license. Yeah. So if you're able to to be cautious through the time frame, then you get like a whole new round of three. So, and that's a very good point that some of the staff has talked about too. Not that I would know that <laughs> <laughs> at all. <laughs> There's a difference between somebody who gets tagged twice in the space of a year and, and somebody who gets tagged once and five years later they get tagged. Right. Those are most likely very different kinds of patterns and circumstances. I, 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 honestly, I think the real objection is that it's how intimidating it is. Yeah. And I think that we can work something out where it would be a little less intimidating, maybe. Not that people who use libraries have social skill problems and difficulties interacting with other people. <laughs> 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 right. But they may be intimidated by talking to other humans. Well, maybe if you put a time frame on it, like three years for your tickets before one goes off. Before it rolls off. So we have, there's there's never a roll off period for no, the first tag. If it's ten years later, it's, it's still, still on your card, your card yeah. and you're missing and you're denied. Well, yeah, so, that would be another good thing. We keep that record. It's on your card that you got tagged, right. but it also is on your card what year you got tagged and right. what items you got tagged for. Right. So right. we do keep track of all that. So is there any? Make a motion on this, or do we want to check with some other libraries? And there's lots of other small libraries too. For 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can I do or that we can check and see? I don't know. I'm, I guess I'm not quite sure. <sighs> Other libraries do, you know, this this process ends at their director, but again, other libraries are fine. And, and, and not, we're an independent library district, so. Right, and we, I understand that we get to do what, and, and we should, but uh, I guess to me the goal is to have people come to the library, you know, and, and be responsible for the money for sure, but I don't know. I guess I would be, having used the time frame before, I would be inclined to think in that time frame and, and either a personal interaction or a letter So I guess I have a couple of different ideas. I, do we want to kind of go through those now, or sure. sort of pro and con, and then and then if, if, if we're there at the end? So so to me, um, I guess I would advocate for for a couple of different options. Uh, one would be either a letter or talking to a board member or your board member or talking to the whole board, and then. Um, I also think there should be a, a time frame. You know, uh, you know, if you don't, have, if everything goes well for three years or five years or whatever we agree to, they should fall off, and you should go back to zero. You know, and it's still going to be on your record that it was there, but you know, in in you know, '66, I was much less responsible than I am now. So got a lot more speed to do <laughs> Wow, it's very small. <laughs> so. Um, it just seems like if we put a couple of caveats in there where it doesn't last forever and you have uh, some options on what you would present you know, to, to your board member as a letter or to the board, um, I believe in consequences, but I also believe in I guess it's kind of the way I, I would. Wendy? But, uh, I think that we should put this off and move on at another time. That we need to think about this more. If we're going to hold on a, a second time, let's. let's have a document here, this process, so that we can put this, is this is in our policy manual, is this policy manual, or is this just another one of those documents that's been signed? Actually, I think we can do that because those are the steps she goes through when she's, when okay. she's our OB person right now, so she okay. just wanted to show you guys how many steps and how much time goes into that process. Yes. Uh, and this so is the beautiful. tagging stuff all I mean, this is beautiful. This should be policy, so let's try. Yeah. Well, the steps are definitely policy. Yeah, so, but, but, I mean, that's one of our jobs here is to turn all, yeah. all so, of these things that are steps. So are when you get to the point, you guys might want to go back to the black and white policy and read through that and see and make sure that it, it you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. So, and then, so what you're saying is that you want to be. I, I, I'm saying, let's talk about this and figure it out right now, but if we're going to put it off, let's not put off the discussion, let's put it off. Until next time. Well, but next time I want, I want this document that I can put my name on and say that's not policy, but this is policy manual. So it seems like the policy can anyway. Uh, and that's, that's a big part of what we're doing. We have, right. a lot, we have a lot of policies that are just like this, where we don't actually have it in a book somewhere to right. even say this is our policy manual. And that, that is certainly goal is to have a policy manual that has all the personnel, all that, the... That's one of my topics. It is. I'm, I'm not saying that it's not. It is in the policy manual. Right. Yes. So let's, yeah. So what you're talking about, if you change the parameters of it, is in essence you're changing the policy manual. Right. But let's see, the, let's see the language in the policy manual. We'll rewrite that language yeah. to make these things. But let's talk about it. I like the roll off for, for first tag offenses. A long time period. One year? Three years? Not one year. Yeah, not one year. <laughs> that's, that's a no. Is three years? I mm think. -hmm. It's a three year roll, and that's what licenses are, right? Or is it seven? I think it's seven. 
I've heard. I think it's seven. About four. About four years. Four years. Well, and I don't know how to do that. Doing that means that, um, <laughs> you know, we keep track of the same way now, it doesn't. So, I mean, it would still be on your account. Yeah, it would. Just, it a second one after the three year period would just count as a first day once again. No. A second one after the three year period would not be treated like a second time, but it would still show on your card as a second because see, and then that's the next step. Right. So, so say, for example, you have a first tag within the first year of being there, and then you don't have another tag until right after the three-year thing, and you bring those books back, and within another year you have a third tag. Then right. what? So if you're going to change that part of it, I mean, are you talking about eliminating having to talk to somebody after the second tag? Okay, I, I, if you got... So in your scenario, you would have to talk to somebody because At the second your time. your first your first tag rolled off. Mm -hmm. So you got a second tag, but it was technically a first tag again. But then you got tagged again right after that. That would be your third tag, but it would be considered a second tag, and you would have to talk to somebody. I I think you'd be I think you'd be better off to still call it a tag one, two, and three. You're just talking about changing the consequences of tag two. The, the consequences. But only in certain, but only in certain scenarios, right? So after three years, you still have a second tag, but you don't need to talk to the board. Yes, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. So yeah. it's still it's still on your record, and it still shows you've done that twice. Right. I don't know. So then, let's say you got your second tag after three years, and then. You get your third tag after five. So you basically have <coughs> three tags over eight years. Um, but you're not having to talk to the board to reinstate your rights as a library member. You're just paying your bill. I don't think that's... Because again, it's, it's not just Hanging those out and finally getting them back. It's the time period where those items are unavailable to everyone else in the community who has also pitched in money to pay for those items. So, are we going to teach our repeat offender responsibility? See, that's I'm making a cut before the board. And, and are we going to go award your responsibility by continuing to check out our materials to them with no? Right, see that's... I don't know. I guess I, I feel the need to read the policy as it exists now and then come up with a couple of different ideas and we can figure those out. Because it's, to me, it's something that I can't sit here and decide. Nah, nah, nah. Yeah. And I want to see the actual policy. What are our actual policy? It would also yeah. probably be helpful to see Many she said about this. Um, this is the well, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. like yeah. We actually have a whole board full of past patrons who have been twice in years. Right. Right. But that goes back in years. But you know how long I want the language. Yeah. So I think, I mean, I just don't know what you're going to see. There's a little more involved because there's a lot of sort of. Really, responsibility and consequences, and I mean, this this works great. Yeah. But she said, if we already have it in the policy manual somewhere, then then we're looking at words that are not the words that we're going to. Yeah. Okay, we'll be able to check that. Okay. So double check the policy. Look at the statistics of how often that's happened in the company. Okay. And how much money we're talking about in that. Well, and, and it would be nice to know what kind of financial burden. Right. Uh, what what are the dollars we're talking right. about? Yeah. And how much are we how much are we uh, are we costing ourselves? Because you might want to you might want to write that into if you're changing the policy you might want to write that in too. You know, if it's one book at whatever thirty bucks as opposed to ten books at eight hundred bucks. Right. Right. 
that might be one of the things you guys want to consider as far as the consequences go. That's what I mean by it's, it's, it's kind of involved. Right. Okay, should we table this then and we'll yeah. do a little bit more homework on it? No. I'll check this out. Yeah. Oh, right. I don't like that. Are there smaller lines? Yeah, I, I think that it's more. stock for the Sanders Sky Factory. I think they're like $100,000. Yeah. Yeah. But just to see what it's so How they handle that. Yeah. That's good. <clears throat> okay. Let's see.